Hi, welcome mini first aiders. I'm guessing you've done the online quiz and this is really just to cement what you've just learned uh, from the quiz today. Um, so my name's Sarah, I'm from mini first aid and this here is Freddie. Freddie's gonna help me um, to do some of the practical work that we're gonna be looking at today. Um, I'm gonna keep it as short as I possibly can. And uh, so let's go through those subjects then. The first subject that you looked at on the quiz was a burn. So um, if you got the answer correct, it was, the first thing we want to do is put water onto it. Ideally running cool water because what we're trying to do is get all the heat out of that burn. All those layers of skin we want to target it's all the way down. Now 20 minutes, you might think that's a long time. It is quite a long time, but that's what it needs to take to get all the heat out because we really want to stop that burning and we want to make it feel better and stop it from hurting. Once we've got the heat out of the burn, what are we going to do then? Well, hopefully at this point you have already shouted for a grown up to be able to help you um, deal with this but once you've got the heat out of the burn we then want to cover it in what we call plastic now you may have heard of cling film cling film is something that lots of households have inside uh, their kitchen but if you don't you may have a sandwich bag a sandwich bag is really quite useful as well just like cling film it's not going to stick to the skin because we don't want anything to stick because it'll be really really painful so the reason why we want to cover the burn if i burnt my hand for example is because it keeps all the dirt and all the germs out once you've got it covered you might have some uh, sellotape in your home and just tape it on and then the last thing that we need to do is of course, really important that you do get medical help. Now, the grown up in your house, then they would be able to work out what level of help is needed. Okay, maybe it's just a trip to the pharmacy. It could be maybe the doctor or maybe a little bit more. But you've done the important thing. You've got the heat out of the burn. You've got it covered with cool running water for at least up, well, up to 20 minutes. We then want to cover it with... Uh, some plastic cling film is really great uh, just to keep the dirt out as we mentioned and then of course help so the grown-ups will be able to help you there on what next level you need to be getting so that's what we're going to do with a burn just remember that it's really important to try and prevent yourself from getting burnt so just be careful when you're around the house and home or even at your friends homes the next thing we're going to look at is choking now when people start going, <coughs> they think that they're choking. Well, it's mild choking. So if they are making sound, if they are sort of like um, making sound and <coughs> coughing, encourage them to cough. That's really good. And hopefully that will sort of ease uh, the situation that they are in. What are we going to do if they are severely choking, as in, and they're silent. It's really important that we've got to help them and we've got to try and dislodge that object that they're choking on. So I'm going to use here um, Freddy just so I can demonstrate to you that on the quiz we said the first thing we want to do is give back blows and that is really, really important. So using the heel part of your hand right between the shoulder blades this is between the shoulder blades this is where we're going to give what we call back blows and it's really important that you hit nice and firm up to five times we've got to be quick because freddie here is choking so we've got to get that item dislodged. So nice and quick heel of the hand one two three four five <gasps> it's come out and if the objects come out great you stop you don't need to go any further what I'm going to do on this, I've got a little video as well, which I'm going to be putting online of me demonstrating to you, what if it doesn't come out after five back blows? What do we do then? Hopefully by giving these nice and firm back blows, the item has dislodged and um, Freddie here is absolutely fine and will be able to probably carry on with this day. But we would also advise though that you may need to get your friend or your parent or whoever it is that was choking checked out by um, a doctor at least just so that everything is okay all right so that's what we're going to do if they're choking but remember let's think about prevention we're trying to prevent you from choking so just be careful when you're eating ideally please sit down uh, while you're eating don't run around with sweets in your mouth because then you're just increasing your chances. So just be careful. Okay, that's the choking. We're now going to look at the emergency telephone number. Now, on the actual quiz itself, 
if you got it correct there, then yes, it is 999, three nines all in a row. This is the UK telephone number. So, but just remember, it's really important. This is only to be used in a real emergency situation. We don't want to be playing around with this number. So 999, if you know your address, it's, if, then it's a really good idea to um, pass that information on because that's what they're going to be asking. And if you don't know the address of where you live, then maybe it's something you can do with your grown up to learn so that if you ever do have to call 999, then at least you'll be able to guide them to where you are. I've got this number up here though, 112. And underneath I've got the word European. Now that might be something that you've never heard of before. We are in the continent of Europe. So if we dial 112 right now from the United Kingdom, then we're going to get through to exactly the same operator person as 999. So that's something that you've learned as well today. Again, please be mindful. 999, it is an emergency telephone number. It's not something that we want to be playing around with. So the next question of the quiz was to do with how many bones are in your body. And I think the options were, what, 120, the other option was 206, and the other option was 300. And the correct answer, of course, is 206 bones. Now, that is quite a lot of bones. So if you really do have time on your hands, then you could possibly start to try and count them. Um, it'll take you a little while. And, of course, you can't see a lot of the bones in your body from the outside. So anyway, if that's something you wish to do. But it mentioned as well in the answer that babies, when they are born, they've got over 300 bones. A lot of these bones are what we call cartilage. So as they start growing and growing and growing, some of these little bones, cartilage, they start connecting and they fuse and they become one bone. So that's how the numbers deplete down. So when you get to a grown up age, then you are going to have 206 bones in your body. Now, there you go. Again, Always be careful, a little bit of safety. Don't do anything silly. Don't jump off anything, walls, etc. Because the problem is you're increasing your chance of maybe breaking one of those bones and you don't want to be doing that. So just be careful when you're outside or even at home when you're playing. Be careful on the stairs. The next subject um, that we're going to be looking at is a sting. Now, you see, hopefully you've never been stung by a bee. But when it starts coming to the spring, summertime, then of course it increases your chances if you're playing outside, etc. Now, if it leaves, the bee leaves a little sting inside, you're probably going to see like a little black dot. And that is this, what we call the stinger. So on the quiz, I asked you, how are you going to remove it? I'm just going to pull up my sleeve just like now so, um, so you can see what I'm going to be doing. And the reason why we didn't want to use tweezers or even our fingers is because at the end of that little stinger is a little sack of poison, venom if you like. And if you grab that little sack of poison, then it's going to inject into the body a little bit more and it might sting a little bit more. So we don't want to do that. So it's really, really simple. So all you need to do is maybe get a card, maybe one of your grown-ups bank cards. No spending money on it though, or just anything with a firm edge, plastic edge. And all we want to do is, if you can see that, is gently just push down and pushing that stinger out. And just by doing that, it will remove the stinger. Job done. Okay. Again, um, once you've got, or if you've got the stinger out, which is great. We always advise you, of course, go and get a grown up to help you. Um, just make sure that you keep the area nice and clean. And if it is still stinging and sore, then maybe the grown up might have some ointment. Or if not, maybe down to the pharmacy and just get it checked out. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. That's how we're going to remove a stinger. So just a firm piece of plastic. There you are. The next subject that was on the um, quiz was uh, what are you going to do if somebody bumps the head? Now, this is something I have done a few times myself. Most of the time, it's on the kitchen cupboard. Anyway, regardless of how you bump your head, it's sore. And of course, it's going to be a little bit painful for a period of time. But I mentioned to you, what's the first thing you're going to do? And the answer was, can you put a bag of frozen peas onto a bump? And the answer was yes. So I have got a bag here of frozen peas here from my freezer and it is really cold because it's frozen. 
So we don't want to put this directly onto the head because if we do, then we're actually going to make it even worse because we're actually going to cause what we call a cold burn. So before you ever put a bag of frozen anything onto your skin, if you bumped your head, make sure you wrap it into a tea towel and that protects your skin from the coldness, the freezer. And then of course you can pop it onto your head and this helps reduce the inflammation. It helps reduce the pain and hopefully you're going to be fine and able to carry on with your day. But maybe your grown up has inside their fridge one of these. This is what we call a gel pack. These are really, really good because you can put them inside your fridge, doesn't go inside the freezer, and it cools it down to a perfect temperature. And you take it straight out of the fridge and it can go straight directly onto the bump, onto the head, and you don't need to wrap it in anything. Um, so this is a real good option as well. Maybe you're out and about and you don't have access to a fridge or a freezer. So this is when you could use these instant cool packs. Now these are really good. You can have them inside your bag, inside your car, anywhere. And it's called instant for a reason. All you need to do is squeeze it just like that. And that instantly creates a cool, oh, it's really cool. And then it can go directly onto the bump that you've bumped your head on. And it's great. Again, don't need to wrap it up in anything. And that reduces the pain, the swelling and yeah, so job done. That's, that's an instant call pack. So there's lots of options there. So, um, but the number one thing is make sure that you get something cool onto the bump and that will help reduce the pain and the swelling. Okay. But again, always, always make sure that you tell a grown up that you have bumped your head or your friend has bumped their head just so that they can keep an eye on you. Um, but hopefully you're going to be okay and you can carry on playing. The next subject that was on the quiz was bleeding. Now, hopefully the only type of bleeding you're ever going to have to look at is a little scrape to maybe the finger or maybe fall over and cut your knee. And it's not really um, serious. And it's something that you can, a grown up, be able to just help you and get a plaster on. But what we're going to be looking at is what if the person was bleeding heavily? Now, there was three options there you could have chosen. The first option is, you could have used anything. It could be a tea towel. And you could put a tea towel directly onto where it's bleeding. Or maybe you have got your jumper and you put that onto the person. But initially, the first thing that you'll have is the person will have their own hand and they could just put their own hand directly onto the injury. Now, what we're trying to do is just make sure that we stop the blood from coming out of that person. So it's really, really important that you grab anything, anything at all, and get it directly on. And that holding that pressure on while you're waiting for a grown up to come and help you is really, really important. Now, when the grown ups uh, arrive, then they may have a bandage and this would be something that they might put on to the injury. So now I'm going to try and show you how to do this onto myself, but the bandage itself will just go directly onto where the injury is. And then what your grown up would do or yourself, you could maybe help them, is make sure that they get it on, but not too tight. But we want it to be nice and secure to stop the blood and also to make it feel better for the person who you are helping. And once you have got the bandage on, like so, there we go, it's not so bad if I say so myself, there's a tail at the end and you can tie it off. And when it's tied off, it won't fall off. So this is how to put the bandage on. Again, um, I'll be doing a little video later on so that you can practice maybe doing some bandaging on your friends or your grown up. Um, so yeah, that's the bandage. But again, let's go back to what the most important thing is if somebody is bleeding, is just to grab anything you possibly can, tea towel, jumper, jacket, and just make sure that you get the pressure on to stop the blood from, from, uh, from making it getting, sorry, to stop it from getting any worse. Okay, so that's the bleeding. The next subject or question that was on there was a nosebleed. Now, this is quite a funny one because even the grown up, my, my partner who I live with, even he didn't know what the answer was, but he's never had to treat a nosebleed, but it's really quite surprising to him. So the options were number one, where you're going to pinch the bridge of the person's nose or where you're going to hold the soft part of the person's nose. And the correct answer was 
the soft part because grabbing the soft part pinches all those little veins that are bleeding. Now, this is normally not a serious thing, but it's not pleasant either. But we want to try and get uh, the nosebleed to stop. So the soft part of the nose. Now, the other option was, well, you're going to get the person to put the head slightly back or you're going to get the person to put the head slightly forward. And the correct answer was head forward. Because if they put the head back, the little bits of blood are going to go down through the throat and it's going to make them feel really more poorly. So it's the soft part, head slightly forward, and it's not very pleasant. So they may need to sort of get a little bowl or over a sink so that they can let this baby spit out any of the blood that's there. The next part of the question was, but for how long? And the correct answer was 10 minutes. Now, 10 minutes, you might think, well, that's a long time. But that's how long it can take up to to stop the, the bleeding so that all the little veins sort of like clot up. It's like super glue and it stops the blood from coming out. So it is 10 minutes. So head slightly forward and hold it, pinch it firmly. Don't keep letting go because every time you let go, it's just going to keep bleeding. So to keep hold for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, let go. Hopefully it's stopped, but if it hasn't stopped, then you're going to encourage the person or yourself to hold it again for another 10 minutes. Again, 10 minutes, that's quite a long time, but it's really important that you do that. And if it's still bleeding after that, then again for another 10 minutes. Cool. That's a long time, 30 minutes. It does seem a long time, but hopefully it's stopped way before that if you make sure that you get the person to pinch the nose really firmly, tilt the head forward slightly and keep hold of it for that 10 minutes and hopefully it's stopped. I'm going to give you a little way of how to really hold the, no, uh, the nose in a real good fashion way so that it really helps stop the bleeding. So if you take your hand like that, like the shape of a V, you see the shape there of a V, and pop your nose in just now, just pop your nose in that little V, and I want you to squeeze your thumb and this finger together really firmly and hold it. And then you can see how you can actually hear me trying to talk. It's not that easy, but that's really positive because I'm grabbing all of those little veins that are bleeding. And that will encourage the person to sort of spit out anything that needs to cover as well. So try that. Ask your grown up, can they do it? See what that feels like. But that's just a little tip. The next subject that was there, so we've got two to go, is the recovery position. So what are you going to do if you come across your friend? What are you doing? And you think, hmm, that doesn't look normal. Why are they lying there? They're not moving. So this is when I'm going to bring in Freddie. Now, I'm just going to pop this piece of paper over like that. And I don't know if you've ever heard of these letters, Dr. A, B, C. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through these letters. So I'm going to use uh, Freddy here. And Freddy's there on the ground. I don't know, I'm just going to tip this just a little bit, okay, so you can see what I'm doing. So this is what we're going to go through these letters. So Dr. ABC, so the first word that's up there beginning with D is, of course, danger. So it's really important that you keep yourself safe. Just have a look around first before you go and help your friend, um, friend out at all. We don't want to end up in the same situation. So make sure it's safe and it is safe here today. The next thing I want to do is see if they are responsive. Maybe they're sleeping. Maybe they're not. So how are we going to see if they're responsive? All we want to do is just give them a tap on the shoulders, like so, and say their name and ask them maybe, can they open their eyes? So, Freddie, can you open your eyes? Can you hear me? It's Sarah. Open your eyes. Can you hear me? There's no response. They're not opening their eyes. They're not talking back to me. Nothing. So they're not responsive. So it's really, really important that you get help, help, help. So you shout, anybody, come and help you. The grown up, if they're outside, they hopefully can hear you and they can come in and help you. Um, wherever you are, you could be at a play park or somewhere like that. And you may need to shout, help, help. Get somebody to come and help you. We're now going to go on to the A, B, C. So we need to start with letter A because that comes first. So A is for airway. Now, what I would like you to do is I'd like you to get your hand. I'd like you to put it onto your throat like that. I'd like you to swallow. 
And when you swallow, you can feel that movement. And that movement inside of your throat is muscles, and there's lots of muscles in there. And your tongue uh, is a real large muscle, and it's strong, and that also is what you are feeling when you swallow. Now, we've got Freddie here who's not able to talk to us, not able to open their eyes, not able to converse. So what we say is that all the muscles are relaxed. So what we have to do is we need to open the airway. So what I'd like you to do now is put your head back as far as you can, as far as you can. Now try and swallow. And it's really difficult. Either you can't do it or it's really difficult to swallow. So why is it difficult to swallow? The reason being is because we have lifted, we have opened up the airway and we've lifted the tongue off the back of the airway. So that's what we need to do here to our friend so that we can open the airway to check to see if Freddie is breathing. So let's start with the airway. How are we gonna do that? So put one hand onto their forehead and you're going to get two fingers and you're going to put those two fingers just underneath their chin, just gently underneath their chin like that. And what we need to do is open the airway. So we need to tilt the head back. And as soon as we tilt that head back, remember that feeling? We've lifted the tongue off the back of the airway. Now we've got to keep hold of that head just while we check to see if Freddie is B, which is breathing. So this is really, really important. So you're going to get your ear down and I'm going to look up and down to see if I can see Freddie's tummy. Is it rising? Is it falling? Can I hear Freddie breathing? Can I feel Freddie breathing on my face? And I'm going to do that for 10 seconds. So let's all count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Freddie's breathing. I can see it. I can feel it on my face and I can hear that he's breathing. So what was the question was, what position are we going to put Freddie into if they're unresponsive? And the answer you said was onto their side, onto the recovery position. So if you said that, well done. The reason why we need to put them onto their side is so that we can make sure that the airway is open and that he continues to breathe nice and easy. There's no pressure onto his little, onto his chest and that we can monitor him a lot easier this way. So once we've got them onto their side, the big C at the bottom there stands for circulation. Is the blood still circulating around the body okay? Are they still breathing okay? And I'm going to stay with Freddie until help arrives. And this is when calling that 999, you are allowed to do it then because this is an emergency. So you're going to stay with your friend. You're going to make sure that they're still breathing. Just put your hand in front of their face so you can still feel it. Can you still hear it? Can you still... Yeah, they're still breathing. This is the most important thing that you're going to be doing is staying with them, okay? So that is what we're going to do and the position we're gonna put them into, what we call the recovery position onto their side and that's what we're gonna do. The last subject, the last question on the quiz, question number 10 was about how long are you gonna wash your hands for? Now, I'm sure this is something that you know um, by now, and it is the answer was 20 seconds. It's really important that we wash our hands for at least those 20 seconds with warm, soapy water because it grabs all those nasty germs and we can flush them down the sink. So, what I've got, just going to put that back a little bit. What I've got up here is 20 seconds. Sing happy birthday times two, twice. If you sing happy birthday twice, that is round about slightly more than 20 seconds. So that's a real good way of making sure that you're cleaning your hands for a real good period of time. So I really can't sing, so I might just mumble it. Maybe you wish to do it with me. So it pretend that we've got a sink in front of us and we've got nice warm. Let's pretend we've got soap on. Shh, shh, right, I've got soap in my hands. And now we're going to wash our hands. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Freddie. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Freddy. Happy birthday to you. Well done, everybody. That's the 10 questions done. Happy hand washing. Keep safe. And there will be more quizzes coming online and also more videos. So uh, great. Any questions, then just um, drop me a message from this link. Take care. Have a great day and keep safe.